Welcome to season six of Bowhunter Die. Wow, I would never believe that five years could fly by that quickly, but Justin, here we go. Yeah, here we go again, season six. Uh, you know, I guess, Todd, first of all, we want to, you know, thank everybody who has watched the first five seasons and made this project such a success for us. You know, Todd, we did over 1.2 million views of season five last year, which was pretty impressive. Very. I mean, it's, it's, it's really rewarding to go to the different trade shows and have all the different people come up and tell us, you know, what they think of the show, both good and bad. You know, a lot of people always have their different feelings and... We won't get into all those right now. Most of our, of course, Most things of, that Justin was doing wrong, but we won't go there right now. But all, uh, all the people who enjoy watching me not shoot deer these last couple of years. Uh, but you know, Todd. Speaking of trade shows. <laughs> Another thank you goes out to everybody who stopped in to see us both in Harrisburg. Uh, we did the Great American Outdoor Show back in February. Nine days of trade show fun. And then this last weekend we just got done with the uh, Wisconsin Deer and Turkey Expo up in Madison. Kind of our hometown show. Yeah. Pretty close to home. Lot, uh, good to see a lot of local people and, there. And Justin, I have a feeling right now there's people sitting there going, hey, what about that? What about that Matthews bull raffle? I guarantee there's someone uh, wondering what yes. we're going to do that. Yeah, so. we had a lot of people stop by the booth and sign up to win. Uh, we're giving away a brand new Matthews HTR. Uh, we are going to be doing that drawing on the next episode, uh, which will be two weeks from now. So if you guys did stop by the booth and signed up, you're definitely going to want to check back and see if you won that bow. Yeah, and we're going to be throwing in some other great prizes too beyond just the Matthews bow. So there's no question about it. Make sure you tune in to the next show for sure. Yeah. Now. As far as getting started this season, I mean, we've got a great team, of course, lined up as we always do. Yep. Uh, you know, we definitely want to dive into shed footage because that's always the, I think, one of the fun parts to find out what deer have made it and who hasn't made yeah. it. And yeah, well, we had a heck of a winter. You know, we went so long, we didn't have any snow. And then right about the time when the deer were getting ready to start dropping their antlers, we had a lot of snow, a lot of cold. I know it prevented a lot of guys like me from getting out right. and really doing as much shed hunting as I would like to do, but uh, I was able to get out, Todd, a couple times and, and find a couple sheds, so I suppose we'll get things kicked off with some of my footage, so let's check that out now. It's February 22nd out here at the lease and uh, driving down the road here heading over to check a standing cornfield where I think there may be a couple sheds and happen to see one laying up here and as it turns out it's Fergie, a deer that I passed a couple times this last year so let's check them out. Nice three-year-old ten-pointer, passed him a couple times last year. Hopefully he'll uh, put on a few more inches and we'll get a shot at him this fall. So first shed of the year, February 22nd. This is one of three deer I was actually looking for. Fergie, just because I passed him a couple times, Baconator and STD. Good morning everybody, it's uh, March 22nd, Sunday morning. I'm um, actually headed out to our lease to do a little shed hunting here by myself. Uh, Todd and I are still gonna be hunting out here this fall, chasing a few of these bucks that I've been unsuccessfully chasing the last two years, but today is kind of a last ditch attempt to find a few shed antlers. We finally got some good shed hunting conditions, overcast day. We got a storm actually blowing in tonight. Tomorrow it's gonna bring a little bit of snow and rain it looks like. So, I don't know, we'll see what happens. We got two big guys out here, Baconator and STD Buck. Those are the two main targets for today. I'm gonna do a little bit of scouting. Stick with me, we got about another 20 minute drive and uh, I got five or six hours to walk today. Hopefully come up with a couple of sheds. So, uh, I don't know, we'll see what happens. Bow hunter die. Well guys, just found uh, one of the antlers that I came out here for, the STD buck. Oddly enough, we're about, oh, I don't know, 100 yards from a stand I hunted on the last night of the season. So, go down here and get it. I spotted it from about, 50 yards or so. Gosh, he's a giant. <laughs> As it lays, my friends, right there. And my stand is right in there. We got another stand right up there. All right, guys, here it is. One of four antlers we came out here to look for today, the STD buck, absolute giant deer. It's a shame he broke off this beam. He had another four or five inches on the beam in a point that he broke off. But 
He's a stud. Oh, that feels good. I may not be able to kill him, but I'll certainly take his antler and put it on my shelf at home. Maybe we'll kill him this fall, so. Shed number two of the day. And who is it but the Baconator? The one and only. Oh gosh, this deer, these two bucks. I just love it down here. I mean, we found STD and Bacon Shed right in the same area last year. And here he is. Unfortunately, his two is pretty chewed up, but not nearly as bad as he was last year. So let's let's go grab him, guys. Oh, baby. Now that's a good day of shed hunting when you get your two target bucks. Let's see him right here. There he is. El Puerco, the bacon. You know, I had a feeling this deer was laying down in this bottom. That's why we couldn't get him killed, but yeah, it's been laying here for a little while. His two's almost gone, but it's definitely him. Look at the mass on that beam. You know that deer anywhere. Big flyer coming off the side here. Split brow, kicker. That's the deer dreams are made of right there. Maybe this year, buddy. Yeah. There he is, the Baconator. Well, as you guys can see, my shed hunting season uh, definitely went a little bit better than my deer hunting season did. You know, as you guys just saw, I picked up these sheds out at the farm this year. And I tell you what, Todd, I mean, if you can't shoot the deer and kill it and put it on your wall, I think the next best thing is being able to pick up their antlers. At least I got them one way or another. There is no question about it. I mean, Justin may not be having the deer killing luck right now, but when it comes to finding these two trophy sheds, I mean, these are yeah. these are bona fide you know trophies. I mean, there's no yeah. question about that. Yeah, they're they're great deer. I mean, here's you know Baconator. We had a lot of guys come up at the trade show and ask me, you know, hey, whatever happened with that deer? Did he make it through the season? Well, there's your answer. He definitely made it through the season. Um, you know. Based on the score of this antler with some missing points, we figure he'll go with the kickers and everything, probably about right around 180, 180 yeah. you know, low 180. So he's a great deer. And then, uh, you know, and I'll be honest, I've told this to a lot of people. I mean, this is the deer that, I mean, don't get me wrong, this is a great deer, but this buck here just, man, something about these giant eight pointers, I just love. So this is perfect. So here's the plan for 2006 season here. 2006, 2015. Well, I, you know, I'm at season six. I'm going back. I'm going backwards. I, I always like the 80s music. Anyhow, here, here's the plan. You heard it right here. Justin said that he did not want to shoot bacon, so he's going to pass bacon over to me, and we're going to let Justin have STD. That's going to be the I plan. I think you've been talking to my wife where you guys like to take what I say and just morph it into something else because that's not what I said. No, that's exactly how I heard it. So how, that was, that was Here's what I'll say. If me. I had these two deer standing side by side, I'm shooting this guy. Well, that's All perfect. day long. I'll leave him for you. If he comes in by himself, he's not going to be so lucky. But oh, I mean, no. this deer here, I mean, Todd, this is a 160 inch eight point. That's a giant deer. I mean, if he grows again, you know, puts on any sort of mass or time length this year, I mean, you're looking at a, a, an eight, nine pointer that potentially grows Boone and Crockett. I mean, that's, that's a heck of a deer. He's got, you know, 13 inch G2. So that's well, my baby right there. I am just happy to be sitting here right now and I've heard Justin say that it's okay for me to shoot bacon, and he's passing that buck to me. So <laughs> have at it, man. That's if you can goal. kill him, next up we're more. gonna next up we're gonna join uh, my. I'm not gonna say nearly as eventful shed finds as Justin, but we did find a few. Uh, unfortunately, one of the bucks I did find was dead. Uh, it was a good one, but you know what? There's always some extra deer running around, so we'll let's just uh, have to wait. Yeah, let's take a look at Todd's shed hunting now. Well, this is not how I was hoping to start off my 2016 season. There was one buck that disappeared on me last year. I was hoping he st was still alive. Justin and I came out to do a photo shoot for season six, and look what we stumbled upon. Here he is laying here dead, unfortunately. A buck that we called Crash. There he is, right there. We're gonna have to call and get a salvage tag the conservation department just an awesome deer I was hoping that he was gonna I was hoping he just disappeared and was gonna move back into the area this year but clearly not last picture I had him was like on October 9th and then he was gone but I guess 
at least know what happened to him now. There's no arrow here, there's nothing here. I don't know what got him or what happened. He was perfectly healthy, but obviously something happened. Oh man, here we go. 2015, what's it gonna bring? Our annual shed hunt that Tommy and I have been going on with the boys. It's begun right now. They've already found, I don't know how many bones, spines, heads. So, here we go. First time on this farm looking for uh, some sheds this year. We're gonna head to the back and uh, get things kicked off. This is what it's all about right here. Get out of here. Kidding me? You think? Dude. First one of the year. Tommy, we're getting <laughs> we're getting crushed here. Craig, nice find, dude. Uh, Craig two, Tommy and I, and Jack zero. All right, well, my turn. Just found my first antler. Nice little five point, probably two year old. I'm gonna grab it, pick it up. And then I'm gonna throw it in front of the boys if I ever get a chance, let them find it. Here we go. You guys found some bones? Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's some definitely decent rub right there. The best time right now for all the ticks come out and get out here and figure out just what direction these bucks are moving. Yeah, I checked over here. Whoa. Oh. What? No way. Holy cow. Now yeah, you guys both have a five points. <laughs> All right, well. Got my second horn, a little four point. Three point, giant, next year, big old buck. This is a fresh tree planting we got over here and Hawkeye Tommy saw an antler up ahead. Let's go check it out. There'll be a heck of a deer here one of these days. He's got everything going on there, doesn't he, Tom? What? No, how many is that for today? Five. Five. Five total. And right, I think I see the other one right over here, guys. I see another one over here too. <laughs> there's one right there. Oh, there's two. Oh yeah. One. All right, guys, this is a hot little spot here. We got two right here. There's two more over here. Come on. We're talking money. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? How do you not love that right there? Bow hunter died. Today is February 6th. I ended up putting up a stealth cam and I actually got pictures of a really huge buck. Uh, his shed. So I got my son out here. We're going to check the trail camera and um, see if we can find any sheds. We got a, a picture. Got a picture of him with uh, his shed off. So uh, or his his antlers off. So he's a huge buck. And yeah, hopefully we can get him. Bow hunter die. Right there. See him? Boo. Boo. Just came down and walked in and we probably saw, uh, I don't know, uh, four or five different does all bedded up and there's a lot of deer sign in here and hopefully we can find uh, some antlers. So it's just fun to be out here with the kids. George is uh, causing all kinds of trouble looking for stuff and uh, 
Hopefully we can find one. We'll look around and see. Bow hunter die. Look over here. What? What's over here? What do you see over here? Go look. What is that? Right over there. What? On the ground. Look at that. What? Go see. An antler! This is awesome. Here's the buck. Looks like there's a little bit of blood left on that. Nice job, George. You found him. Um, that's pretty cool. Just right here, this is like a deer yard in here. There's tons of tons of sign and droppings and all kinds of stuff. So bow hunter die, baby. First shot of the year. Another buck. Go see him. He got a big buck. Wow, another buck. <laughs> Holy cow. Found another huge antler. Uh, this is a big 10 pointer. It's a different buck. Not even sure which one it is, if I have a picture or not, but really cool to find these big buck antlers. It's a lot of fun. Looks like the squirrels are pull, trying to pull this one up, up into the tree, so. Bow hunter die, you gotta love it. <laughs> Ended up finding two shed antlers. It's pretty unbelievable. On this big guy, we actually got a picture of this buck. He's got a kind of a cool point. So this is one. And then George and I were walking and working our way back and we found another one. And this is a different buck because it's the same side. So it's two big left sides. So there's two big, uh, it's like 10 pointers running around. This guy's other side has got a big drop tine and a bunch wow. of stuff. So we got some pictures. So. George, what do you think? Pretty cool? Pretty fun to see the bucks? We saw some deer, it was a lot of fun, so bow hunter die. Bow hunter die, baby. Man, Todd, that really stinks, you know, finding that, that dead buck. You know, you put so much time and effort and energy into chasing these deer. When you find one dead like that, it's definitely a little bit of a letdown. It, 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 it is, Justin. I mean, it, it's crazy, too, because that particular deer, uh, we've actually been watching for years. I mean, yep. we have, you know, multiple years of photos of that buck. We called him Crash. It's the way his antlers kind of crashed in front of him there. And uh, it, it was just funny that we were out there working together, actually doing a photo shoot. Well, that's what I was going to mention. I'm sure people are wondering, why was Todd wearing face paint I'm when he was out up. looking for <laughs> shed antlers? Yeah, we were doing a photo shoot and actually a commercial shoot for a customer of ours. And Todd's like, yeah, I'm going to go take a quick walk around. And sure enough, it's the, what do it's you the, find? It's the ninja part of me. You know, I always used to do that as a kid, so I still, I still like doing it. You just put on makeup and run yeah, around man, in just the woods? disappear in the woods, man. <laughs> But no, it, it is a shame to find bucks like that. Listen, something you always got to remember too. I mean, in that case, when we did find that deer that day, we did call, you know, the Illinois Department of Natural Resources. Uh, we gave them the information. They sent me a salvage tag, right? You know, in right. the mail. So then I went back and tagged them. Yeah, and took yeah, very the important. I mean, guys, if you find a dead deer when you're out there in the woods, definitely make sure whatever state you're in that you're following the regulations as far as taking that deer home with you. You know, a lot of states require you to right. have a tag. I mean, if you were ever to get stopped with a a deadhead in your truck that doesn't have a tag on it, you're definitely going to get in trouble. So yeah. make sure you you know follow the game laws there. Uh, I guess moving on from that, Todd. You know, one cool thing about these two segments is you know you saw with Neil and then you and Tommy, you know, taking the kids out in the woods, getting them out there, walking around looking for sheds. You know, spring's a great time to do that. Temperatures aren't super hot. Bugs aren't all over the place. They've got cabin fever. They've been cooped up all winter. Get them out, and as you saw in your case, and. Then, Kids are picking up sheds like crazy. They were. They were having fun. And just for the record, I do apologize for not inviting you on that trip that day. I, I, I did forget to ask you to come. On I called course, Todd, I, and he's like, oh, hey, we're going shed <laughs> Oh, By the way, you can come. And, you and it's not like he's never done that to me before. I, I promise I invited you. you to go to the lease with me that day. Yeah. You said you couldn't go. I yeah. called you first. Right. That's why he shows up with these, these two monster sheds, and I, I end up with nothing. But anyhow, it's okay. All right, what do we got up next? <laughs> up next, we're going we're gonna to get out in the woods and uh, start working on preparation. I mean, guys, this is the time. I mean, if you want to be successful in the fall, it starts now. I mean, you start finding those key trails. You start figuring out where you want to do your food plots. That work begins now. Guys, you don't just always roll out at the, you know, the beginning of the hunting season and just fall into a big deer. It, it comes with planning. God does. Oh, here we go. It comes with planning and, and it comes with, you know, strategic setups. And you know what? It's cool to see some of our teammates who are taking advantage of this time right now and getting out there and doing just that. Take a look. Hey, 
We're out here today uh, down by the river bottom cleaning out some areas. We're going to make a couple of food plots and uh, real excited about that. So stick around and see what happens. I'll let her die. In this dairy here to the east that we're going to put that uh, forest of trail blend from Heartland Wildlife. Scuff it up some and then uh, we'll plant here in about a week or two. Okay, we came out here turkey hunting, so we thought we'd check on our food plots we dissed uh, two weeks ago and they're looking really good. We're gonna use the uh, Heartland Wildlife seed and we have three different seeds we're gonna put on various uh, food plots, little tiny ones we've decided to make here. Uh, we have the Forested Trail Blend, we have High Pro Forage, and the Rack Maker. So stick with us throughout the season, we'll give you some updates, see how it goes. Bow hunter die. All right, it's that time of year. Me and Dalton, we're gonna uh, load a UTV up and we're gonna go put some minerals out. Gotta keep them deer healthy, so let's get her loaded up. All right, we're at the magic spot. Right here is where it's gonna be. We're gonna get this cleared out in a minute. We're gonna get these minerals in. And then I'm gonna take you a tour around here and show you why we chose this spot. Um, Putting minerals out is just all around great for the deer. It's not just the bucks, it's also good for the does, the fawns. It's just all around good nutrition. So we're gonna get these out and we're gonna put a game cam on it and uh, we're gonna keep this thing going all summer long. Uh, now's the time of year they like hitting it. So let's get this cleared out and let's get this thing in the ground. Back behind me, there's an ag field back here. Uh, there was beans last year, it's gonna be in corn this year. So deer use this a lot, and this area right here, it's just a bunch of small saplings. And behind me, about 100 yards, it turns into the old strip mine, uh, bigger timber, and it gets real hilly up in there, and they love to bed up in that stuff. This is a little tra travel corridor down through here. There's a really beat trail right here, and it leads right up into the bedding and straight past where we're gonna put our minerals out. I'm gonna go show you the other junction spot and another reason why I put this where I put it. All right, here's another reason right behind me that we chose this spot. Um, there's a watering hole here. A lot of times they like to get them a drink after they get in the minerals and everything, but there's a really, really beaten trail that runs right beside this. And it also junctions in with right where we're putting the minerals. We've got the water here, a really hard wore down trail. We're gonna put the minerals right there. We got bedding back behind us. Got that other corridor I just showed you over there. And we got the ag field back behind us. So in my opinion, that's just a perfect spot. And we're gonna lay one in and hopefully they're gonna hit on it. You know, I enjoyed watching Dan's segment, Justin. I mean, he's got a lot going on there. I mean, he established his mineral site there. Right. Of course, as always, you know, make sure you're in a state where you can put out minerals. If, you know, in his, in his case, in Indiana, he can do that. But I tell you what, I like what he's showing everyone there. I mean, he's showing the, the, the key trails there. He's got water. He's got food. He's got a lot of things coming together in a small area. If you'd, yeah. let, if you'd let me come, I'd, I'd show up. Well, <laughs> I, I think, you know, one thing that's important for people to realize, you know, who do put out minerals, I mean, yes, minerals can attract deer to a certain spot, and they can help you get trail camera photos, and they could do all that type of stuff. Great but, for inventory. But if you really want to use them to your advantage as far as harvesting an animal, you have to think about where you're putting them. You can't just walk out in the woods and dump minerals somewhere and say, I'm going to kill a big buck over right. this mineral site, because that's not really the way it works. So Dan's doing a good job of going out, making sure he's putting them in a spot that is going to be advantageous for him. Obviously, you get the benefits of, you know, the, the health benefits of putting those minerals out for the deer, and then he also gets a, a spot to, to get some trail camera photos. So hopefully he'll get some good ones in. And, 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 and anyone who's a fan of the show knows Dan gets a job done each year. I mean, he, he absolutely puts his time in, and he is pretty strategic about the different stand sites that he has. So yeah. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed yeah. it. Well, and then other than that, we also saw Cal 
down there putting in some food plots. And I think the you know one thing he didn't necessarily mention in his segment, but he was using that forested trail yeah. blend, which I think is a great blend for a lot of guys that have smaller food plots uh, in those shady areas. You saw he kind of had that old road bed through there, which yeah. is where they were putting their food plot. That's what that seed mix is really designed for, is those smaller plots on the road beds, inside the woods, shady areas. And um, it works. Yeah, and it definitely works. So we're going to be excited to follow along with their progress as that food plot grows up and then they get to hunt it this fall. Uh, so Todd, next up, what do we got here? Are we actually going into a turkey We are next? finally going oh, into what you really want to see and that is something gets shot. Right? Not more of us talking? I thought that's what everyone Well, was. everyone, no. hey, it's, it's turkey time. You know what? Man, Josh. Yeah. Josh started the season off with, ah. a, with a thwack on a nice turkey uh, on opening day. So let's take a look at his hunt now. It's uh, Saturday, April 4th. It's uh, the opening day of spring turkey season here in Tennessee. Uh, finally, all the snow and ice is melted and we're ready to go. Things warmed up, things are starting to bud out, turkeys are starting to talk. Uh, so we're excited to get to our lease here in Grundy County, Tennessee and, and get a little hunting done. Uh, we left Knoxville this morning at two o'clock in the morning. Uh, we've driven about three hours. We're getting ready to be here. Uh, haven't had a whole lot of time to scout this year, but what little time we did scout, we found a couple birds roosting in an area that we hadn't hunted before, but looked like they were going to be willing to work. Uh, so we're going to get in there early this morning, get set up, get some decoys out, start calling to see if we can get them to work in on us. So hopefully we'll have a great hunt and it'll be a great morning and we'll see how it goes. Bow hunter die. It's opening morning here in Tennessee, like we said earlier today. Uh, we came out, got the blind set up, got our decoys out, and uh, within 15, 20 minutes, that big gobbler worked his way in, and he worked his way into the left and worked behind us, came back around, we called a few times, and he finally committed and came in, uh, but he stayed just out of range. Uh, he stayed to the right of the blind, and he would spit and drum and come out and, and, uh, and just give us about a six inch window outside of the tree, and we never could get a shot. Uh, this went on for about an hour. I mean, it's just killing us. Uh, finally, he, he worked his way to the right, and I had an opening, and I took the shot. And it looks like I put a perfect shot on him. Uh, so we're going to get out here in just a second and go, go try to find him. And I uh, had a great morning. I mean, first morning here in eastern Tennessee, you got to love it. Turkey season. Bow hunter died. Well, we finally got out of the blind. We gave that turkey about 20 minutes or so to go ahead and expire. I uh, got out of the blind. 20 yards away, I can see him laying there. So it's, it's a good shot. Turkey didn't go far, so we're gonna head on over here and get him picked up. Well, it's opening morning at Tennessee turkey season. Uh, we got out here early this morning, got set up in a spot that we had seen turkeys in the past. Uh, ended up being a great morning. This gobbler came in and it was kind of a heart attack bird. He kept going around us and, and, and gobbling and he would leave and he'd come back and then he'd give you a shot for a quick second and it disappeared. Uh, and finally he messed up and gave us just a little bit too long to make a shot. I uh, put a wonderful shot on him. He ran about 20 yards and, and that was it for him for our hunt this morning. Uh, we had a great time. Uh, it's great to be out here on it for the morning bag of birds. So, go on to die. 
Well, you know, Ted, I think this is the first time we've opened up a season with an actual turkey hunt in the first episode of the season. Usually it's, you know, scouting and, and shed hunting and all that type of stuff. But Josh goes out opening day, man, capitalizes first opportunity, puts a bird on the ground. Well, and I mean, and, and I mean, I, I love watching those turkeys and they're all just puffed up. And I, he said that that turkey almost, you know, was yeah. messing with him for over an hour. Yeah. And I think, I, what do you call it? A heart attack bird? I don't know what that means. I'm not sure what I'm that sure means. I'm sure somebody either. who's a more versed turkey hunter than I, which there are many of them out there, will know what that means. Maybe and, it gave him a heart attack because it was around him for so long. Well, he is still alive. I know he didn't have to go to the doctor after shooting the turkey. But you know what, Josh? We're going to make it his responsibility to go to the forums and explain exactly and, what that is. And tell everybody what a heart attack turkey is. Yes. So congratulations to Josh. Uh, looks like he made a great shot. I mean, the bird only went like 20 yards and, and they were able to recover it. So. All right. And speaking of turkeys, other than Justin, we're, we're actually, you're going turkey hunting this weekend. Yes. Tommy and I will be out turkey hunting Saturday morning. So fingers crossed. Maybe I can get myself another bearded hen. That will be interesting to see if you can pull that <laughs> off. Ed. Well, that's all the action we've got for this, uh, the first episode of Season 6 of Bowhunter Die. Of course, Todd, we want to take a couple second, seconds, I should say, to thank the people who sent in their trophy photos for this week's show. Phil Clue. William Rain. Michael Coffey. Derek Robertson. Hey, congratulations, everybody. Those are some great trophies. Now, remember, if you want to see yourself right here, in an episode of Bowhunter Die, all you've got to do is log on to the homepage of bowhunting.com, click on the Submit Your Trophy button, and send us your picture. Well, you may have noticed that Justin has a different hat on, and this is, there's a specific reason why he does. You know what? We were in Pennsylvania. Of course, Justin wasn't here during this time. I was at the office working, mind you. Okay, well, no, allegedly working, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge later. While I'm there, when a couple guys come up to the trade show booth and basically... Yeah, they want to kick my butt. Now, now, no point intended, but it was Scott Butts definitely kills bigger deer than Justin does, of course. Yeah, but who uh, doesn't? That like doesn't mean anything anymore. You kill a spike, it's bigger than what but I But the, the point of the story was, uh, I guess Justin was given... Why? How come I'm taking you, all the heat for this? You. you were giving the guy a hard time for his last name being Butts. So we promised him that we, he, we would wear his hat in Scott, the show we're sorry. to prevent... <laughs> So Justin can access the state of Ohio again without getting his yeah, butt Yeah, Scott, kicked, so. please don't show up at a trade show and beat me up. Todd put me up to all of it. No, all that's it. not true. But listen, we definitely want you to keep sending us your photos for sure. Uh, we've got a great season plan for season six. For yeah. those of you who are just getting ready to get out in the turkey woods, now's the time for sure. Yeah, shoot straight. Uh, be safe out there. We will uh, see you guys back here in two weeks. We're going to do the drawing for that Matthews bow. And actually, we've got a bunch more turkey footage already uh, coming in. Uh, Kent and Dalton went out to Kansas. They dropped two big uh, gobblers with awesome. their bows. And the rest of the guys are hitting the woods and the fields this week. So check back soon. We'll have some more great bow hunting action for you. In the meantime, don't forget to check out facebook.com forward slash bow hunting for daily updates, news, photos, and other exciting information. We want to hear your opinions and your stories. So join us now and like us on Facebook. Get loosened up. Come on. Loosen up. I don't need you to get this some film. Loosen them up for the show. Okay. All right. All right. We're going to return for Oh my goodness. <laughs> what? What do you think? I was going to get a shade?